Welcome back to a new week with the Takis family. As you'll recall, this is a completely Laylee red barn that started up the week of November 9 with their two A5s, their three Discoveries, and their one Laylee Vector. So Tyler's back with us this week, and he gave us a lot of tips and information and feelings on their Vector system. And as you may recall, I, I challenged our Facebook audience to leave us with some questions. And we got quite a few questions back on the Vector as well as the Discovery. So Tyler, thanks for joining us today uh, to talk through some of these questions that our Facebook audience is curious about. And you know, as Tyler answers these questions, they don't have a lot of data to compare this to. So um, they're learning as they go. So the first question, Tyler, is from Amy. And Amy asks, what are the biggest maintenance aspects in regards to the Discovery Collector? So, um, so far, um, the biggest thing that we've had to deal with to keep them going regularly is the ultrasonic sensors that are located just, just in front of the wheels in kind of a well. And uh, they're kind of in the danger zone of manure splatters, so you kind of got to go in there and wipe them off. Um, we try to do it at least once a week. Um, sometimes you, you wake up in the morning and want to stalled out because that sensor is dirty. And um, that sensor just helps helps it navigate through its routes um, that are scheduled throughout the day. So that would be the biggest one is keeping that ultrasonic sensor clean. And um, I mean, like you said earlier, we've only had them for uh, you know, a month and a half or so here. So we're still just keeping an eye on them and you know we've, we've taken out the the filter on top and rinsed that out and just seeing if there's any buildup or anything in there and everything looks fine so far but just just trying to stay on top of things there's there's good information in all the manuals and stuff that kind of tell you what to look for at what times so um, i would say the ultrasonic sensors are the are the biggest thing though okay great tip just keep your eyes on it watch watch what it's doing and keep it clean makes a lot of sense um, sounds like we've got a little Laylee uh, aspiring farmer with us tonight too. So thanks for bringing together a little guest. Um, Jake asks, is asking, how do you deal with different layers of forage in a haylage pile uh, with different dry matters, different wetnesses when using the block cutter and the grabber? Right, that's, that is a, a tough, uh, tough thing to figure out. So um, right now we, we don't have a block cutter, but we're, the plans are to get one soon. And uh, right now we just have a, a grapple bucket on the, the front of the loader, which I, I just rip open bales and tear them apart. And I just, I just try to mix them in as evenly as possible um, as far as how much work you want to put into it. If you want to try to sort out that dryer stuff and put it in a separate block in the kitchen and label it different and and, and uh, give it a different dry matter moisture. You can do that. Um, I think the goal is, is uh, to make feed that has more of a uniform moisture um, rather than, you know, raking up different piles of stuff. I know it's hard, it's, it happens to everybody, I think. But uh, I think uh, as far as planning ahead, just trying to get um, a feed that has a consistent moisture and uh, uh, I think that, I mean, as far as uh, from like a feed perspective to get feeds that have a little bit higher moisture, I think the vector hand handles that a little bit better. Plus the cows uh, like the, the feed that's a little bit wetter. It's a little more palatable, a little more easier for them to chew up. So um, if you can just avoid um, forages that are a little bit too dry, that's probably a good goal to set in mind when you're, when you're harvesting, so. Great tips. So another question that we received is the following. Is there a significant difference in the cost of electricity versus the cost of diesel for running a tractor? Well, uh, yes. I mean, diesel is a lot more expensive than electricity. And, and I, I have definitely been using a lot less diesel. Uh, before I was using it's probably filling up our tractor once every week or every week and a half with 40 gallons of fuel and now I might fill it up once a month maybe um, when I when I do use the TMR for other things um, 
and then the loader the loader that i was using i don't use i don't fill that up as much uh as well so overall i'm using less diesel but um i guess it just depends on what the price of diesel you know how much diesel you're used to using versus you know electricity is cheaper than diesel i know that so very good and our final question that we'll uh, field tonight is from cody he asked did you see an increase in dry matter intake after switching to the vector um this is another tough question that's kind of uh, tough to answer because um, the old way we were doing it, we didn't really have this, the numbers that we do now with the T4C and the reports that are put together. So um, at, uh, I guess as I was mixing up feed the old way with the TMR uh, wagon, they were eating pretty much on par with what I was mixing up for how this, you know, the amount of cows that were in the barn. And right now, they're, it's probably about the same, but again, we're pretty early and we've got some uh, cows that are uh, later in their lactation. So I think when we get some new heifers in there, new cows that calve in, we'll probably see that go up because um, that's sort of the, the, the biggest uh, value I think we see in the vector is having, you know, fresh feed in front of them. And, uh, you know, they just have it all the time. So it's sort of the idea is keeping that fresh feed in front of them so they can eat it easily so very good thanks tyler for covering those questions from our facebook audience um and we just did experience our first real significant snowstorm um are you seeing any differences in managing this barn uh as compared to your previous barn oh yeah Yep, um, we can definitely uh, plan ahead a little bit better as far as getting like the, with the vector stocking the kitchen up uh, with feed so we don't have to do that while it's snowing. We can like today, I, I don't think I, I mean, I went into the barn in the morning just to make sure everything was looked fine and uh, look for new calves. You know, we got a calving area in there and then I spent pretty much the whole day plowing snow. So it was kind of nice just to take that time to get all the snow plowed rather than just plow the bare essentials to get you know my tmr ready to mix the feed get feed dumped and then you know at the end of the day go back out and and go out and plow more snow for the next day to make things a little more easier so today i got a lot done and it's definitely been way easier not having to worry about uh milking the cows and not having to worry about uh um getting feed in a tmr and dumped in the barn so Definitely a, definitely a big change. Nice. Nice to have a few conveniences or new ahas when the weather outside isn't so nice. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time uh, to go over these questions from our Facebook audience. As we uh, wrap up this series with the Take His Family, next week, look forward to speaking with Debbie. Um, Debbie's, uh, you know, part of Dan and Debbie's Creamery. Tyler's mom, Josie's mom, um, really the matriarch of the, of the farmstead. So we're quite excited to hear from Debbie and understand how life has changed for her and as she sees the products impacting the family and the way that they're farming differently as they go forward. So thanks, Tyler, and we'll catch you around the, catch you around the barn some other time. See you next time. Bye-bye.